Awesome. Here comes slow motion again with those uh, 32s. Notice the nice height back. Notice how the bells don't flip flop. They don't bobble underneath me. I feel if you start the rep with that bobble underneath you, it's going to be bad up top. If it's bad at the bottom, it's going to be bad at the top. Um, so take your time. Make sure that that from your shoulder through your elbow through your wrist to the very end of the kettlebell stays in a straight line. Um, there's no point. You have to wait for that weight to slow down right there and then we come back up. So you're using the momentum. That's why I think a lot of people think that this is easy. They think that, oh, you're just swinging something. <laughs> Obviously, they've never done this. I mean, that's 140 pounds that I'm decelerating, transitioning, and then bringing back up into this spot that I want it to be. It's not as easy as a lot of people tend to think. Um, anyway, I'm um, wearing a knee sleeve in my right knee. I got meniscus surgery a, a couple months ago before this, so I'm trying to warm my way back into this. Here's that slow motion again with the, as you can tell, it's, it's slightly different. I don't have to use as much calves there, but like I said, I'm using muscle as uh, accelerant and deceleration tactics. Um, so basically what you're doing is you're sensing that weight. If you get used to using the same weight all the time, you run the risk of it's not going to be on point. So once again, I was feeling a little bit tight, so drop down, do some uh, thoracic work. I think the thoracic is really important. Um, I'm talking on this video after I just did the IKFF Worlds, and of all the stuff that I did, long cycle and snatch and a jerk relay, my thoracic uh, spine and uh, spinal erectors are the most sore. So training a lot more than that, unless you're doing much lighter weight and working on your conditioning. But from the side, as you can tell, I try to keep my heels down as long as I can, drive off, initiate it from from the quads on the first dip, get a little help from the calves, drop under it, get those heels to hit at the same time the elbows extend to the side of my ears. And notice how the kettlebells didn't bobble there. Now what I like to do is, that's still 140 pounds. I, I don't care about, I don't want from the side. With the 20s, notice that they're still not bobbling. So if I, now that's slightly different there, I could use a little bit more um, control to move around on my torso. I launch that from my legs. And a lot of people think it's different than doing Olympic lifting. You're not, you're not flexing at your hip when you're dropping that weight down because the weight is in a different spot. You're actually leaning, once you catch it in the rack and you adjust and connect to your body, you lean slightly back. Now notice I didn't let the elbows pop off my body. But if I can work on training energy systems differently instead of just standing there or endurance or I need I need sprint too. So I need to be able to tap into that to allow me to get a good 30 seconds of sprinting. You know, I want to catch up to either catch up to people at the end or just really get ahead and get some more reps. And you don't want to do that at the beginning. That's just like sprinting the first mile of marathon. So anyway, notice how I'm catching those kettle kettlebells. They roll to a stop. They're not slamming into my shoulder. So watching it from the back, a lot of interesting things you can see. And you notice that my left and right arm are not exactly equal. You know, everyone has had different things, injuries, certain tight muscles, um, skeletons are not exactly perfect um, we're human so the best thing that you could do is basically work with what you have and see if there's anything that's causing you issue or problem and just you know work with a, a muscular therapist or chiropractor or something like that but I like working from the back so you can see that it's not a forceful launch ahead of you you're not trying to throw the weight as far away from you as you can you're trying to bring it upward once you absorb that in a backswing let it do its uh, little momentum forward and then you're going to redirect the weight 
upward. So a little back view. Um, notice that the hips are staying stable. It's not a lot of wobbling around there. So the glutes engaged, abdominals engaged just enough right there. There's no hip shift back and forth. Um, absorbing, absorbing again, transitioning that weight back up, racking, getting set, and then launching. There you go. Slow-mo jerk. Fundamentals with teachmekettlebell.com and we will see you guys later. Thanks for watching my long cycle training.